Join in song, and when you rise, please greet your neighbors. It's also on your worship sheet. You don't really need a hymnal. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your Happy Easter, everyone. Happy Easter. As we gather here this morning for Easter and for Christmas, we always see so many unfamiliar faces. I realize that it's a holiday where spouses, parents, or siblings do a little bit of arm twisting to get folks that normally don't come to Mass to be here. I hope that you realize that whether you come back next Sunday or we don't see you until Christmas or next Easter, know that you are always welcome and that your presence here makes our celebration all the more complete. It is in that spirit of welcome for everyone that we gather in God's house to celebrate that the Lord has risen from the dead. He has conquered our greatest fears. But so often in word or in deed, we turn away from the Lord for those moments now we ask for his mercy and his forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, 
through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Let us pray. O oh God, who on this day, through your only begotten Son, have conquered death and unlocked for us the path to eternity, grant, we pray, that we who keep the solemnity of the Lord's resurrection may, through the renewal brought by your Spirit, rise up in the light of life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever.
A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter proceeded to speak and said, you know what has happened all over Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power. He went about doing good and healing all those obsessed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses of all that he did, both in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. This man God raised on the third day and granted that he be visible, not to all the people, but to us, the witnesses chosen by God in advance, who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commissioned us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one appointed by God as judge of the living and the dead. To him, all the prophets bear witness that everyone who believes in him will receive forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. Would not lose as now be. 
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, if then you were raised with Christ, seek what is above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Think of what is above, not of what is on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, your life, appears, then you too will appear with him in glory. The word of the Lord. Father, victim. 
and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome brought spices so that they might go and anoint Jesus. Very early when the sun had risen, on the first day of the week, they came to the tomb. They were saying to one another, who will roll back the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone had been rolled back. It was very large. On entering the tomb, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, clothed in a white robe, and they were utterly amazed. He said to them, do not be amazed. You seek Jesus of Nazareth, the crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Behold the place where they laid him. But go and tell his disciples and Peter, he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him as he told you. The Gospel of the Lord. This past Monday, Archbishop Laurie celebrated the annual Chrism Mass. It is a Mass in which the Archbishop consecrates and blesses the oils that will be used for the sacraments throughout the upcoming year. It was a wonderful celebration. The cathedral was filled to capacity with parishioners and clergy from across the archdiocese. The music was incredible. And to be clear, it was a celebration not apart from reality. The Archbishop took head on the challenges that this local church faces in filing bankruptcy and also embracing the Seek the City initiative in which some tough decisions are going to be made as to which city parishes can remain open due to the shift in population. But despite all of it, there was this palpable sense of excitement and enthusiasm that while this was a tough year, that we were rallying together we understood the heavy burdens that we were facing, but we were going to get through it. But as we all awoke Tuesday morning, the feeling of hope turned into dread. The feeling of excitement turned into shock as we all saw images on the news and read articles about the key bridge collapsing. Of course, shocked by the loss of life, those workers still not identified yet, the impact on our port, on our local economy, and the many jobs that are impacted by this collapse. But perhaps the feeling of, of shock was a feeling that was somewhat familiar to us, not perhaps solely because of the Key Bridge, but as we think past over these last months, maybe there was another bridge that collapsed in our lives. Perhaps it was a bridge to a loved one and it collapsed in death. And we're here today experiencing a tremendous amount of grief. Maybe it's the collapse of a bridge to a loved one who we call a spouse, that a relationship has fallen apart or we've experienced divorce. Maybe the bridge that collapsed is the loss of a job or a disappointment in hoping to get into a particular high school or college and not getting in. Or maybe the bridge that collapsed in our lives is something that is so personal that we would dare not mention publicly here in church. Given all of this, I think the essential question for us to reflect on today is, does the resurrection of Jesus have any impact on our lives today? Now, I realize that that's a very heavy question and perhaps one that you might not expect to explore or reflect on for Easter. 
And I suspect that as you get into your cars, the first thing that you'll say to those in the car with you, I told you we should have gone to the 9 a.m. Mass. <laughs> but I think it's an essential question to explore today because the danger in this day is that we limit it to an opportunity just to simply eat more candy and talk about Easter bunnies. And while that's important and that's part of Easter, if that's all that we celebrate, notice what happens tomorrow. Tomorrow we go back to the ordinary doldrum of life. We go back as though nothing has changed, and we face our problems and our struggles. We seek to rebuild those bridges on our own. And yet today, this Easter Sunday, offers us so much more. And what is offered to us is reflected in today's scripture. You see, as Catholic Christians, 2,000 years later, we're given the incredible vantage point to look back in time, where the folks that are mentioned in today's gospel had such a limited perspective, we can see the full picture. And how true it is in today's gospel. Despite the fact that Jesus had said time and again, I will suffer and die, but I will rise again. Despite the miracles, the changing of water into wine, the raising of Lazarus, the restoring of sight to the blind man, all of these things, Mary Magdalene and Peter and John forgot it all. And we heard in today's gospel that their limited perspective was, was as they approached the empty tomb, the assumption was that someone had stolen the dead body of Jesus. The final blow is though it was not enough to crucify the Lord and to kill him, to steal what was left. At least the disciples had Jesus' body to pray near, but even that was gone. As Mary Magdalene came to the tomb, she saw the tomb was empty. She didn't run and say, the Lord is risen. Peter and John didn't say, his words are fulfilled. Instead, they automatically assumed that someone had stolen his body. I say all this, brothers and sisters, not to provide an excuse for us to mount a judgment seat to say how foolish those disciples were. Because isn't it true that so often in our own lives, we walk around with such a limited perspective? How many days do we go on thinking that our Lord is dead, that we face our problems and our struggles completely on our own. That Jesus was a nice guy and he said some wonderful things, but that the Lord is actively engaged in our lives in making a difference? So often we forget that. And even worse, not only do we forget that the Lord is alive, but rather we begin to attribute to him not help, not hope, but pain or suffering. Or we begin to think that God is some distant God that doesn't care about the struggles that we are facing in our lives. And yet the Easter day reminds us how untrue that is. Easter day positions us in front of the open tomb, the empty tomb, and announces in clarity and in a provocative way, Jesus Christ has risen. That God loved us so much that he sent his son into the world to experience all that we experienced. Jesus experienced disappointment, as we do. He felt frustration. He felt pain and suffering. He experienced the grief of losing a loved one. And even to the end, Jesus conquered our greatest fear in death. He faced death head on and rose from the dead in a very provocative way to say to you and to me and to centuries later, if you believe in me and trust in me, you have nothing to be afraid of because I have even conquered death. 
And so the resurrection of Jesus has everything to do with our lives. But notice what it does not provide for us. Sometimes we think that if we follow Jesus, if we love him, that somehow there's this special algorithm or formula that prevents us from experiencing any struggle or pain or cross. Jesus never promised that. Jesus instead told us that to follow him at times would bring upon pain and suffering and rejection. But what he promised us through his life, and most importantly in his resurrection, is that we are not people to be brought down in despair or doubt because Jesus Christ has risen from the dead. He has conquered everything, which gives us hope. Peter, in today's first reading, is intentional in helping us to realize that this risen Jesus is not some ghost, but he's intentional in saying, we ate and drank with this man. We ate and drank with the man that was crucified and died. And by his own power, he rose from the dead. He conquered death itself. My brothers and sisters, what that means is that for Baltimore, we will rebuild. And we will be better and stronger. How? When? We don't know. But it is because of the risen one that we gather here in hope and in trust. And in a very intentional way, knowing that the Lord will not abandon us. And the same is true for the bridges in our own lives. Let us not go around looking for the dead Jesus, but rather look for the risen one in our lives and allow the Lord, we must trust in him, to rebuild those bridges that have collapsed. Now someone might say, Father, that all sounds great but you don't know what I'm experiencing in my own life. I'm just not sure. I just don't see a way out. My brothers and sisters, the same feeling was what the apostles and Mary Magdalene felt that first Easter. They could not fathom. They saw the horrors of the crucifixion. They laid Jesus in a tomb. They saw firsthand he was dead. And yet here we are 2,000 years later, celebrating that he rose from the dead and is still alive today. No matter what bridge has collapsed in our lives, the one who has conquered death can certainly conquer whatever we are facing. And so my brothers and sisters, it's a long way of saying this, that on this Easter Sunday, we face the reality of the collapsed key bridge and perhaps the collapse in our own lives. But we do not leave here in despair, but rather in hope and in confidence, for we focus not on what has fallen, but rather who has risen. Jesus Christ has risen from the dead. He has conquered our greatest fears. It is because of his resurrection that our lives are changed forever. Does Jesus' resurrection have any impact on our lives today? It sure does. Let's pray for each other. As we stand here today in front of the open tomb, see that the Lord is risen, and might we live according to his resurrection. The Lord's promise of his resurrection is given to us at our baptism. And so it is fitting on this Easter Sunday 
that we renew our baptismal promises, those promises that unite us as one family in Christ. And soon we will be sprinkled with holy water. And it is through these sacramental signs that we are, remember, or that we are reminded of the risen Lord. And so it is in that spirit that I ask you, do you renounce Satan? And all his works? I do. And all his empty show? I do. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body in life everlasting. And may Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water in the Holy Spirit and bestowed on us forgiveness of our sins, keep us by his grace in Christ Jesus our Lord for eternal life. Amen.
The Lord has risen from the dead. We rejoice and are glad. It is with faith and trust in the Lord's resurrection that we now offer our prayers for the needs of the whole world. Our response will be, Lord, hear our prayer. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, may he be blessed in continuing good health, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For our nation and our world, may we be able to find our way in peace and love through these troubling times at home and abroad, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For a willingness and courage on our part to maintain Jesus Christ as the cornerstone of our lives, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those persons, both here as well as all around the world, who became members of the Catholic Church last evening, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the two men who lost their lives in the collapse of the bridge, and for the thousands locally and elsewhere whose employment has been disrupted, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For visitors at this Mass, may you always feel welcome here at St. Francis Xavier Parish, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For Wallace Martin, for whom this Mass is offered, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are in ill health, and for those who are in hospice care. May they experience the healing power of Christ risen from the dead, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, may they share in the new life of Christ's resurrection, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. And for other petitions which we hold in the silence of our hearts. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. God of life, you sent your beloved Son to show us that death does not have the last word. On this joyous day of the resurrection of Christ, grant us renewed faith and commitment to life in him. We ask all this through Christ our Lord. Amen.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Exultant with paschal gladness, O Lord, we offer the sacrifice by which your church is wondrously reborn and nourished through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. <laughs> Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but on this day above all to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he has destroyed our death and by rising restored our life. Therefore overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts, we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. In giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. In giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial, of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. 
Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Francis Xavier and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and William, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you've gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we wait the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And, with your spirit. and let us offer one another a sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God, and behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Look upon your church, O God, with unfailing love and favor, so that renewed by the Paschal Mysteries, she may come to the glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. Before I offer the final blessing, Father Ferdinand, the pastor here, uh, wrote a long letter that he would like me to read, but he didn't take into account that I would preach too long. So, my mom will yell at me if you are all late for your Easter dinner, so let me just give you the abridged version of what Father Ferdinand has expressed. First and foremost, he would like me in his name to wish all of you a very happy Easter. Secondly, he'd like to express heartfelt appreciation for all the dedicated volunteers who tirelessly prepared and served our church community beginning from the first day of Lent through the resurrection of the Lord. I'm not going to mention each ministry because I'm certain that I'll forget someone and get myself in trouble, but why don't we just show a collective form of appreciation for everyone. Last but not least, he's very grateful to each of you for being here for Mass today, and also thanks to all the parishioners who continue to be so generous to enable this parish to continue parish ministries, both locally and abroad. Thank you for your ongoing generosity. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. May Almighty God bless you through today's Easter solemnity, and in his compassion defend you from every assault of sin. Amen. Amen. And may he who restores you to eternal life in the resurrection of his only begotten endow you with the prize of immortality. Amen. Now that the days of the Lord's passion have drawn to a close, may you who celebrate the gladness of the Paschal Feast come with Christ's help and exalting in spirit to those feasts that are celebrated in eternal joy. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia. Alleluia.